okay, it's all right with me. Some things are just meant to be. It never comes easily. And when it does, I'm already gone. Welcome to the Forefront Five. Our podcast guest today, Jen Weiderstrom, is an American fitness model and a personal trainer. And is not only a popular name among fitness enthusiasts, but TV enthusiasts as well. She may be best known for her role on NBC's The Biggest Loser, where she is, in fact, undefeated. Now, Jen trains or coaches, as she says, people in their life journey, really combining fitness and emotions and the reason behind food choices. She is most focused on making each body the best it can be through life and into old age. And Jen, I want to welcome you and ask you about your song choice that you chose for us today, Okay, It's All Right With Me. Thanks, Beth. Um, You know, Eric Hutchinson's an an artist that I followed for years. I found him on this rundown bar in Buffalo over a decade ago. And every time he puts out music, it just makes me smile, keeps me upbeat, reminds me of all the good that's going on. And, you know, I just felt like this is something that makes me get out of bed every day and reminds me of, you know, the good. So I thought I'd share it with everybody else. Fantastic. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey as a coach or a trainer. I remember first recognizing you as a trainer on The Biggest Loser. Why don't you outline a little bit your career leading up to that point and your career since? Oh, that's a massive question. Uh, let's see how to, how to give cliff notes to everybody. Um, TV was never in the plan. It was an accident. Um, and I kind of fell into it um, because I liked the opportunity to help people. Biggest Louvers are, is obviously a massive platform. You reach millions of people, but at the heart of who I am, I'm a coach, and I really love to see people win. Um, and this is a platform that allowed me to do both. And um, obviously, you know, being a part of that show presents a lot of great opportunities. I mean, I've been able to publish a book and, you know, and I've been able to build up my own platforms. I have my own app. I, I run challenges every month. Like I'm still, you know, the great thing about TV is whether you're on it or off it, you can still do what you're passionate about. And that's for me coaching. So I've got all these programs running um, through my own courses for anybody that, you know, maybe watch the show. Uh, like many of my contestants did, they would watch Vegas Loser with a pint of ice cream or they'd order pizza. And, and now they still get to work with me full time through, you know, like I said, my app and my challenges. So it's presented a lot of opportunity to kind of put the spotlight on what I love to do and what I'm great at with people. And now it's just continuing that road. Um, I think more than ever, especially during COVID, I felt extremely purposeful. I think I had gotten a little bit lazy with how proactive I was being as a coach um, because I think it's hard to, to scale connection um, digitally. And um, yet it shouldn't stop us from trying. So that's where a lot of my efforts have been and where they continue to go. And it's been, it's been a lot of fun. Man, it sounds like you serve as so much more than a trainer, but as you say, a coach, a life coach. What is it like being a trainer on The Biggest Loser? Well, it's a it's a massive challenge, um, but with privilege comes responsibility, right? And um, I just knew that if I if I put my people first, in your case, if you put your patients first, um, you can't go wrong. And that's so there was a lot of pressure. There's a lot of things I hadn't done before, but I was so successful because I made it about the people who I still talk to every day. I mean, I talk to all my contestants almost every single day. And it's a, it's to me why, I mean, I've been undefeated on that show and why my contestants have always won and why we've been so successful together in the long run. So lots of pressure, lots going on, but lots of upside and reward as well. So, um, and plus I've definitely got a competitive nature, so that was fun. <laughs> I love that you still talk to your contestants. How many are actually keeping the weight off, still successful, and how many have relapsed or regained weight? Well, it's an interesting question because a lot of times, you, and you just did it, you know, you, you, you're you qualifying their success based on a number. And how often do mm. we as wellness professionals say, don't look at the scale, don't look at just that one variable. It's like saying, oh, Jen, you have brown eyes, you're not pretty. 
You know, like it's like it's there's not just one characteristic that explains success. Have I had some put some weight back on? Absolutely. Have I had some keep some off? Absolutely. Um, but some people that have put weight on have gotten out of terrible relationships and have shifted jobs and they're the happiest they've been and they've they've you know back backseated their physical health in order to kind of organize their life, but they're back on that 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 train now and it's 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 interesting. Um and, and, I, and I always defend my contestants a little bit because the struggle with the weight, um, it's never about the what they're eating, it's why. And mm. on the show, we really do so much intensive work to address that. And we, and we work on it and we dig in. But this is not something that happens overnight. Even like my journey with food, my relationship with food took probably over three years to really come to a really peaceful and strong place. And it takes time. And I, and I think the one thing that a lot of people forget watching is on the show, we, you know, we do the grocery shopping. They have to cook the meals, but we do the grocery shopping. They don't have a full-time job. They're, they're not full-time parents. Their only job on the ranch is to work with their coach, right, to make good meals. And they work those muscles really well mentally. But none of the other muscles that get you in trouble are there like you know walking down the candy aisle when you're trying to fulfill a prescription at your pharmacy or you're in between jobs or you're picking up kids from you know school and taking them to soccer practice and there's that that those hunger moments where you're passing drive throughs and you have stress and and we don't get to work any of those mental muscles on the show because they're just not available to be worked because they're they're basically quarantined you know the way we are now and so my contention is like, I think the most, the, the biggest amount of work that I do with my contestants are off the show because they're faced every day with real stress, real schedules, and the real willpower and muscles that we, I guess I call them mental muscles that we work on um, outside, of the, outside of the ranch. So I love how you just use your words and talk about health as a global perspective not just diet or exercise and I know that it's easy to make good decisions when you're isolated and not so easy when things aren't going as well or later on in the day when you're stressed and tired so these thoughts resound with me it's amazing that you stay connected with your contestants as well I can tell that you are truly really good at what you do so let's talk more about you you actually look amazing let's talk about carb cycling this diet that you have started you need to outline this for my listeners and for me and let us know if this is actually a good option for everyday busy dermatologists who are in the clinic nine hours a day does it apply to us I mean, it applies to everybody, but especially people that are highly motivated, highly busy, and what I call everyday heroes. You, you guys are taking care of people first and foremost. And so often when that happens, the energy to take care of ourselves are, is usually in last place or close to it. And what carb cycling essentially is, is you take a ratio of three to one of three days where you're, you're tracking your macros and, you know, specifically, and I, I put on, you can go to weederstrong.com and you can check how this all goes mapped out, but where we do three days that are lower in carbohydrates, right? Um, where we have a higher protein, higher fat content. And then we have one day that's a high carb day where it's higher in carbs and protein and lower in fat. And this allows us a couple things. One, freedom. There are so many nutrition fads out there that strip you of foods that I know I'm never going to live without. I'm never going to live without beer and wine and pizza. Last night I made pasta here at home. <laughs> you know, I know I'm from Chicago. Food is a big part of the way I enjoy life. It's part of my family. It's part of love. It's part of my joy. And food is soothing. I don't care who you are. Like food makes us feel better for so many reasons. It's nourishing. It's connection. It's gifting, you know. So what I like about carb cycling is because you're giving assigned macros each day, it's almost like a Tetris puzzle. You can spend your macros however you wish as long as you're within your macros. So like on my high carbohydrate days, I'm having pastas, I'm having, you know, sandwiches, I'm getting a fresh baguette from the grocery store, you know, like those are the things that like I love and I lean into. And then on my three lower carbohydrate days, 
I'm still getting tons of great fuel through my proteins and fats, and I'm lowering carbohydrates because from a, from a biological standpoint, uh, you'll, your doctors were not on this, you know, you're, when you have carbohydrates, your liver needs about, and it's varying per person, but about 80 to 90 grams of carbohydrates. And once that, that, that fills, right, the, the liver takes what it needs to feed like the central nervous system, your brain, all kinds of that, it spills over into your muscle bellies. And again, depending on size and activity and everything like that, you're going to need between, I don't know, 250 to even 400 grams of carbohydrates. So once that happens, that's when your carbohydrates, when you've had an excess, you start to spill over into your fat stores. And that's where people have gotten this bad, you know, information around carbohydrates make you fat. Well, no, they don't. Carbohydrates feed your body, your brain, your vital organs, and your muscles for energy and but once you go in excess and you're giving yourself, quote, too much energy or fuel, then, yes, those fuel stores will go into your fat stores because it's like, oh, we've got extra, Jenna, give me extra energy today. I'll hold on to it. So what carbs cycling allows me to do with you guys is say we're going to get our liver taken care of, we're going to get our muscles taken care of, and then we're going to have some low-carb days. So we make sure we use up those energy stores so it doesn't spill over into fat. And two things happen. One. I'm giving your body the energy it needs to build and sustain energy and muscle belly. And then, um, two, now we're actually getting what we need from the, from the fat side, like healthy fats, getting enough protein that's going to fortify our systems. And there's so many, I mean, there's so much information on why fats are good. And, you know, as opposed to like that, that stretch of time where we had like, you know, no fat, everything and everything was so high in sugar. So it really is the best of both worlds. And my favorite part about carb cycling is it really teaches you what's in what you're eating. Because you'll go through a couple days and you're like, well, I've only had 50 grams of protein today and I've had 150 grams of fat. I had no idea those were, you know, that's where my, my food choices were taking me. And a lot of times this happens with people like Jen, I'm working out every day. I'm doing my spin, spin classes. I'm, I'm, why am I not seeing a difference in my body? It's like, well, to get your food and the answers are right there for you. Very interesting. You talk about three days on one day with some carbs. That's four days. What about the other three days of the week? Do you just start over on the first day again in a four-day cycle? Three, one. Yeah, exactly, Betsy. So you go three, one, three, one, three, one. But like there's, I have programs for people if they just want to maintain weight. I approach um, programs with carb cycling if you want to build muscle. So there are ways to utilize this based on your goals. But yeah, exactly, and you, and you just kind of you kind of cycle through with that, and it gives you your power back and your freedom back. I think this is a great nutritional choice because we all want our freedom back, and I feel like your plan almost allows a cheat day, if you may, not carb free. You can be lower carb a few days and then have some more on the fourth day. I know personally when I restrict myself say I'm not going to eat sugar or carbs. It's all I can think about. And so this diet plan eliminates this kind of severe restrictive diet. Right, but that's livable. And that's the thing though. So for instance, you know, last night was my high carb day. So I had to, I did pasta, I did vegetables, snap peas, tomatoes, spinach, and shrimp, right? So I did a lean protein and a pasta, and then I used a little bit of olive oil and butter on my noodles. But I didn't do tons of olive oil because if my carbohydrates are high, my fat is a little lower. So my body really goes after and metabolizing the, the, the carbohydrates. So it gives, does give you that cheat, so to speak, even though that's the rest. I'm trying to change the psychology around food and around restriction and around carbohydrates because it's all okay. Like it's, in a way, it, it allows you – to like kind of earn your carbs, you know, like you earn your carbohydrates and you look forward to them that day and you map it out and you can have it and enjoy it without feeling stress or, or, or shame. This makes sense to me. I do a lot of cardio and the times that I have chosen not to eat carbs, I actually get sick. I get dizzy. I feel like headed on the treadmill. So this plan seems like it would resonate for all sorts of body types and all sorts of folks, no matter how much fitness you're fitting into your life. Speaking of diet, you didn't mention wine or beer or alcohol at all in your approach. And I know I like to have a glass of wine a day. So how does that fit? So again, call it my Chicago upbringing. I, a booze is not something I'm willing to fully let go of. I have um, and anybody listening that has a goal in mind, when you take out alcohol, 
your goal, the timing of reaching your goal is expedited. You know, I think there's a statistic out there that said about uh, alcohol inhibits fat metabolism by about 70%. Um, but for me, like, I'm, I'm okay with that when I have, when I, I'm there at nights when I want a couple beers or I want some wine and I do it and I just include it into my macro calculations. So I, you know, I account for it in my in, in my carb cycling and it's it's okay you know like that's to me that's livable and i i'm, I'm someone that has a personality but if you restrict me whether it's for alcohol or different food for a matter of weeks or months i will run towards that thing and binge all day and all weekend and often all week on it so to me i keep it for me i keep it in that's great i i think that really creating a livable approach including alcohol including some treats here and there and more carbs makes you jen more relatable to all of us so kudos for that tell us what you recommend for actual workouts you know there's two groups i think there's the women who want to stay slim and slender and toned and then maybe folks like my husband or the guys out there who want to be big and muscly and really bulk up what would you recommend as far as frequency and mix of cardio versus weights, et cetera? I think regardless of which category you're on, I, I cannot re recommend strength and weight training enough. Muscle always pays for the party. It's burning calories all day. It creates capabilities. And, 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 and I, to me, it keeps me my body uh, available to do what I want it to do. Cardio has its benefits. It keeps your heart strong. It's great for so, for circulation, blood flow, but like strength training does that for you as well. And so I almost recommend a combination of the both. Um, I like doing a, a strength circuit, whether it's body weight uh, um, or weights, depending what you have. And then you, you, you know, you pop like a one to two minute bike or run or, or, you know, cardio movement, you know, at the end of those weight circuits. So you get your heart, you get your muscle. And it really encapsulates a really well-rounded program, um, especially now with COVID. I mean, even in my app, my programming, I'm, I've got a month of body weight training right now. Just so everyone can kind of start to move. But then once you create a baseline foundation of strength, you can go a lot of directions. And the strength will actually help with your cardio, whether you're a runner or it's going to help in that direction. So um, as far as frequency, I always like, you know, if, if you can do it, four days is, is really, really optimal. Um, I always say put at least one of those days on your weekend to keep you honest. I think the days that I move, I always eat better. Uh, I, I'm more thoughtful about my food choices, I should say. Um, but worst case scenario, like if you're stressed, if you're busy, I call it a three-day rule. Don't let three full days go by without you having moved and gotten your heart rate up and broken a sweat. So that's kind of like a two days off, one day on, which would still put you at just about three days a week, you know. And it's a really great little personal rule to keep in your back pocket to keep you honest. So even if that's the third day, it's after dinner, you're like, crap, oh, Jen's rule is three days and I forgot to move. Then you set a timer for 15 minutes and you do push-ups, sit-ups, and squats for 15 minutes, right? You just got to keep a connection to, to movement because in the long run, it's going to save you. Because what happens is three days turns into three weeks and then it feels like Kilimanjaro and you can't get going. So I um, mm. really believe in muscle work. I believe in that touch point on movement. Um, I believe if, if you only had time to do cardio or strength, you do strength. Um, but if you could get yourself to really do it, you do strength with the end cap of that cardio because that's, that's really the best of both worlds. That makes sense to me. So speaking of cardio and working out, I know that when I've trained for marathons in the past doing hours and hours of cardio a week, I actually have gained weight. Do you actually feel you can do too much cardio when it comes to weight loss goals? Yeah, I mean, oftentimes people aren't eating enough. So if you're someone that's really training, uh, training consistently, your workouts are vigorous, that's why I like the carb cycling because I actually identify what your, your, your total daily expenditure is for calorically. So we know what your body needs to run and to fuel. And so oftentimes when you're under eating that, your body gets into a stressful state, your cortisol levels go up, you actually start to store, um, store fat. And often sometimes too, uh, Betsy, it's inflammation. Your body, if you're training hard and you're not, you're not eating enough to help it like heal, your body gets inflamed. And, and that's a, I mean, obviously that, that affects your world and dermatology very much. And so a lot of that's just, it's, it's care. So 
people have to make sure you're eating enough. Um, and the rest days, are, to me, are the days that you, you make your greatest advance training. It's those rest days when you heal and you re-fortify for the next section of whether it's marathon training or weight training that your body has its greatest, um, you know, leap forward. That leads me into my next question. For those who are working out vigorously, especially the guy who wants to bulk up, like I spoke of earlier, do you recommend supplements? Yeah, I mean, there's always very various things that are out that are really helpful. Um, never underestimate the power of a great pre-workout. Uh, pre-workout gives you a little bit of caffeine, gives you a little bit of vasodilators that help bring muscle to the muscle, uh, sorry, blood to the muscle bellies. So like Vital Proteins, uh, Vital Performance has come up with a, a couple great new um, supplements from the pre-workout standpoint. Um, also, like any kind of BCAs, branch chain of amino acids, are great, especially if you do like a fast workout or you're in between your day. Getting those amino acids in your body to, again, fortify those muscle bellies is great for you. Creatine is an excellent tool um, to help with that, and not just like muscle growth, but like brain function. And collagen is a staple in my day. Collagen has a special amino acid called uh, gly uh, glycogen, and this is responsible for helping repair the connective tissue, not in just your knees and joints, right, your skin, hair, nails, all of that, but it helps, like, refortify your stomach lining, your intestinal wall, so nutrition absorption will be higher. So those are, those are my, my go-tos um, as far as supplements are concerned. Great advice. I would assume that lends to injury prevention as well. Yeah, I mean, that's, that the number one goal for any kind of fitness plan is forward progress without injury. You know, we, we've, got, we've got one body, and what I'm doing in my 30s affects me in my 50s. What you're doing in your 50s affects your 70s. So if you're interested in not just like, you know, abs are not important when you're getting older, but living pain-free. I mean, even my grandmother, she always just used to say, never get old, it hurts too much. You know, so <laughs> living, feeling capable, living without pain, I mean, quality of life is number one. And you can start to uh, shape how your, how your quality of looks in the future right now. And that's, that's, that's a big part of my why. Like, you know, it's great. I love, we, you know, getting dressed up, wear a cute dress and all that shit, and that's fine. But honestly, I want to feel great as I get older, and I'm, and I'm working on that right now. Speaking of cute dresses and going out as a star, tell us what your normal day looks like as a star. There's, you know, it's funny that you just brought that up. I just launched a free course, and you just go to weederstrong.com backslash free dash course. I can give you the link, and you can give it to your listeners. It's a five-day free course that actually takes you through key supplements that I love, a day in the life of me, what a high-carbon, low-carb carb day looks like, what a, what a workout looks like for me. And actually, that might be the best way because then any of you listeners can pop there, get the free course, and have all of this in writing mapped out for them right in front of them. That's great, Jen. I'm personally going to jump on that opportunity, and I'm sure that my listeners will as well. So thank you for providing that for us. One of the things I actually love about you is you seem so real to me. You know, you post photos of yourself. Maybe when you feel like you need to slim down or your diet hasn't been on track, you'll take pictures and share your story with your Instagram audience and on your website. So since you are a real person, tell us what your diet weaknesses are and what makes you fall off the wagon. Well, I actually have very too far ends of the spectrum. I, I manifest very physically when I'm upset, meaning I, I feel stressed. So I actually end up not wanting to eat. So I'll scrape like crackers on a stick of and I'll just stand up in my kitchen and I'll do it for like three minutes and I'll just sit there. And like, yes, there's some fat in the butter, but like, I'm like crackers and butter, not, not nutritionally dense, Betsy. <laughs> and so I end up under eating and then I'll end up, I'll end up, you know, maybe wanting, I go, I'll just have a glass of wine. And so then, you know, I'll, I'll go hours and barely eat anything. And then I'll binge and like crush a whole pizza. And I, I think for me, what I've started to mitigate is now when I start to eat, when I feel sad, I, I know I need to kind of stop and shift. I need to kind of like, okay, reset. What's, you know, what's really going on here? Because I can, 
eat and soothe and overlook what's really going on. Um, or I, you know, I can say, oh, I'm just going to keep eating. And, and that's where I think people blink and they, they wrap and they're 20 pounds overweight and then 100 pounds overweight. So, I, I, you know, I have both ends of the spectrum. But then what I know is that, like, I, I allow myself some room. I go, okay, I'm going to order this pizza. I'm only going to have three slices versus old Jen would have finished the whole thing. And tomorrow I'm going to get up and, and I'm going to go for a long walk or I'm going to go for a lift and train with a workout buddy or something like that. So now I realize I can't change who I am, um, but I can befriend it and understand what my system is and start to just put some boundaries on it. So that's like if I'm sad, I don't, I don't eat the whole pizza. I'm not allowed to drink when I'm upset or angry. And if I, you know, I, I kind of do go into that little bit of a dip with food, I know I'm moving the next morning. No questions asked, like, because I feel even better when I move. All of this has been such great advice. Jen, tell me about how COVID-19 has thrown your life on its head. I know it's just rearranged everyone's schedule so much. Has it affected your life and your diet and your fitness routines, et cetera? Um. You know, I, I always joke, like I live with my, I have a bulldog, so there's not a lot of dialogue anyways with him. <laughs> so, so I, I, I just, the biggest shift for me is there was a lot of things that I didn't realize I was like, thought I had to do. And by this now, like, you know, nation imposed, government imposed lockdown, it's freed me from these have tos. And I really look at how I'm spending my time, how I'm spending my mornings. I have carved out, like, I'm almost looking at things, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, my God, I've had to give up X, Y, and Z because of this lockdown. And now I've flipped that. I go, because of this lockdown and what I've looked at myself, what am I not going to give up once we start to go back to normal? You know, and, I, and, I, and I've, I've held time for reading um, I'm creating way more. I'm programming me way more. I'm coaching. It's really like pushed me to create that digital platform because I, I prefer to work with people, you know, three feet from me and that's not possible right now. And so it's really forced me to go through these growing pains of expansion and being there for people and, you know, really creating mentorship with other coaches and with other people um, through the process. So I, I'm not, it, 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 it's, it's interesting. I still spend a lot of time on my own, obviously, but I am just, I feel so purposeful and by way of coaching, it's invigorated my joy for that. Um, the, again, the digital platforms where I'm, I'm literally coaching, I've already got hundreds of people signed up and I'm working with them every day. Because the thing is, Betsy, as you know, everyone's an expert now. Everyone's, there's so many quote unquote trainers on our on Instagram, but it's not about the push-ups and sit-ups and people really need connection and they need a coach. And, and they need that community. And I, and I provide that better than, for people better than most. And that's what I know what we need right now is to create those feelings of, of that, that humanity and support because that's what we really need. And frankly, I know it because I need it. So that's really been the biggest change. If that, I know it's kind of a long-winded answer, but it feels like the most correct one. All of this, Jen, has been so fantastic. I want you to coach us now, the Forefront Five, with five key takeaways for our group. Okay. Um, and I know you gave me this ahead of time, but I, um, I, I'm going to kind of stick with what my gut instinct is. I really feel that what's going to anchor you during whether it's COVID or a chaotic time where things are normal, listen to your instincts right? Don't look at everybody else's paper for the answers. It dilutes your own clarity and own passion. And, you, and, 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 and that's what pulls us off track. And that's what pulls us to places where we feel like we're in that hamster wheel, not going forward. So let go of comparison. Do something for you every day. And I know that sounds corny. I don't care if that means putting, you know, wrinkle eye patches on under your eyes, are going for, you know, a, a five-minute coffee walk, you know, at some point in the day, or if that means kicking off your shoes and walking in your backyard barefoot in the, in the summer sun, there, there needs to be that when, uh, that's three, that's three. Number four, your resistance is your radar. So if there's a conversation 
uh, whether it's with yourself or someone else, that you're avoiding something you don't want to look at, chances are you're really ripe for growth there. So look at it without judgment and just be curious. Why am I resistant to this? Why am I resistant to learning about Jen's Carb Cycling Challenge, right? Why am I resistant to start working out again? Why am I resistant to talk to my, you know, my child or my, or my spouse about X and Y? What's really going on? Um, and I think my number five is, is, is being honest with yourself with what you need. And what I mean by that is there's a long time where I was angry at even myself. I'm like, geez, Jen, you're a coach. You do this for a living. You're on TV. Why can't you get to the gym by yourself, right? Why can't you, you know, why can't you just do all this on your own? And I'm like, well, because I'm better with a team. I know for me, my productivity, my output, my happiness is better when I have a training partner, when I have a team to report back to. And that's why a lot of my coaching is based on that community accountability aspect. I provide that for people because I know it's what I need for myself to be very successful. So instead of like trying to change that, embrace it, like know what you need and provide that for yourself. Very, very good advice, Jen, and applicable tips. Thank you so much for joining us on the Forefront Five. If people want to learn more about you, they can go to your website, widerstrong, W-I-D-E-R-S-T-R-O-N-G.com. They should follow you definitely on Instagram. Purchase your book, Diet Right for Your Personality Type, and for sure, try your five-day free challenge. Yeah, I actually the link in the email. You can just pop it and send it to whoever you wish, my girl. I got you guys. That's fantastic. Thank you. Stay safe, stay strong, and keep the faith. And Jen, we're going to close out with the song that you picked for the Forefront Five, Okay, It's All Right With Me. Thanks, and have a great day. <laughs> Thanks, girl. Bye. Okay, it's all right with me. Some things are just meant to be. It never comes easily. And when it does, I'm already gone. I'm practically never still. More likely to move until I end up alone at will. My life continues inching along.